As we continue to honor Black History Month, we're taking a closer look at efforts to save places significant to black history in Colorado. So this week we begin in Fort Collins at the home of the first black Oscar winner, Hattie McDaniel. The first black person to win an Academy Award was banned from the film's premiere because of the color of her skin. The year was 1939, and that actress was Hattie McDaniel. Her legacy reaches beyond Hollywood. Fort Collins, Colorado is a long ways away from Hollywood, but this humble home was Hattie's home. Colorado was actually, I would call it, the foundation of her true performing career, which prepared her for Hollywood. Hattie's great-grandnephew, Kevin Goff, moved to Fort Collins to learn more about his aunt. She's from Wichita, Kansas, and from there they migrated to Denver just before 1900. What's the significance of this home? It was um, the home that they lived in in Fort Collins. They spent most of their time in Denver, but they were here for maybe a year or so. Hattie was probably five or six years old. Goff says around that time, Hattie started performing with her siblings in vaudeville acts, and eventually she made her way to Hollywood. What did you think about her Academy Award winning performance in Gone with the Wind as Mamie? You know, it's, it's twofold because some people look at that and go, well, the, the black characters are depicted in a certain way. Are they they're being depicted as happy to be in slavery? Hattie looked at that as an opportunity. Number one, you're trying to survive. Number two, if I can get into this role, if I can win the role, knock it out of the park, then that can open a door. Hattie was not one dimensional but no woman is. The gift Hattie gave me and that I, I tell people and I share with them is she taught me to appreciate women even more because women might get credit for two or three things, but they're doing a million things. What do you think about the efforts to preserve this home? History is, is great. I, I think um, any chance we get to preserve history, it's, it's a win-win. But about an hour away from Hattie's home, another home for black Americans who, like Hattie, weren't that far removed from enslavement is fading away. Dufu was an African-American community. It was created about 25 miles east of Greeley, and it started off in 1910 and then lasted pretty much until the Dust Bowl came in in the late 20s and then pretty much it disappeared after that. University of Northern Colorado professor of Africana Studies, George June, is a Deerfield expert. One of the creations of Deerfield is that African Americans had difficult time, even in Colorado, owning their own homes and owning their own lands. Deerfield was getting off the ground. You had one of the largest claverns of the Ku Klux Klan in Denver, one of the largest in the country. Meanwhile, at Deerfield, as far as we could tell from all the reports and newspaper accounts and police records and everything like that, the farmers at Deerfield got along very well with their white neighbors. They were also loaning each other equipment. They would have dances. At its height, Deerfield would span 20,000 acres and had 200 residents. What makes Deerfield so special? It was highly successful in every way and it worked. These days, almost 100 years after the Dust Bowl that destroyed the settlement, there's not much left of Deerfield. Walking through Deerfield, it's kind of incredible. You can almost imagine with your mind's eye how things used to look. And it's, it's a little bit emotional to think that this huge piece of black history may not be here anymore in just a few years if it's not preserved. We're working with some people right now in Congress. There is a, a bill that I passed to examine Deerfield. Right now we're trying to see if Deerfield would be uh, a national monument. Gotten a couple other grants to uh, stabilize uh, some of the buildings and so forth. June says Deerfield is an unofficial monument to black resilience post-enslavement. And to lose it would mean losing a symbol of the American dream. And Jason will have a new part of this series every Thursday on Denver 7 News. And you can get caught up on some of other the other stories that Micah has so excellently put together. Thank you. That's up right now on Denver7.com slash Black History Month. We'll be right back.